Hi, thanks so much for joining me. In this video, we're continuing our discussion of how to approach equilibrium problems. And I use what I call the DSE method. It's just a checklist to make sure we are being complete in our analysis of a question. All right, so in this one, um, identifying the substance presence, this is a general gas phase equilibrium. I did not add volume to volume, so there's no dilution. I don't have a soluble salt, a strong acid, strong base, or a ba acid base neutralization. No stoichiometry calculations. So I'm going to jump right into the equilibrium. So the question tells me, I almost got ahead of myself here. So the question tells me I have 0.4 moles and 0.4 moles. So I have equal moles. So I have equal moles of nitrogen and oxygen present. So in a gaseous system, those are the only things present. I don't have NO. That means that their partial pressures will be equal. Their volumes are equal, their temperatures are equal, their moles are equal. Therefore, their partial pressures must be equal. You can, if you want to, say that the partial pressure of nitrogen is the mole fraction of nitrogen times the partial pressure total. Um, and, and that would be what you would do if they did not have equal moles. But if they have equal moles, their partial pressures are equal. What that allows us to do then is say that the partial pressure of nitrogen is equal to or plus the partial pressure of oxygen is equal to one atmosphere. So two times my partial pressure of nitrogen is one. So that means that my partial pressure of nitrogen gas is 0 0.50, which is also equal to oxygen. Okay, so that I think helps us get to the beginning amounts there. And I think that's an important point to note is that you may be asked to bring in your knowledge of gas laws uh, into equilibrium. And we are going to be doing that regularly in this unit. So I have my starting amounts. The question says calculate and O at equilibrium and we're given Kp. So Kp, I'm going to go ahead and set up that expression, is the partial pressure of nitrogen over, or excuse me, nitrogen monoxide over nitrogen times oxygen. Okay, now let's go ahead and fill out our rice table. I have no choice but to make product, so I'm going to lose x, lose x, gain 2x. Remember that 2 comes from that balancing coefficient. So I have 0 0.50 minus x, 0 0.50 minus x, and 2x. Plug that in, and this looks like it's going to be fairly complicated. Um, so I'm going to have 2x squared in my numerator, and 0.5 minus x, but since those are equal to one another, that's the same, that's the same, that ends up to be squared in the denominator. And this looks like some yucky, long algebra coming at you. But if you recognize both the numerator and the denominator are squared, you'll see that we can simply take the square root of both sides of this equation. And I want you to go ahead and solve for that. And hopefully you get, and I say hopefully because this is what I got and I'm hoping I'm right, I have 0.05 for x. So now it asks me to calculate the partial pressure of NO at equilibrium. Well, NO, the partial pressure of NO is 2 times x, so it is equal to 0.1. 2 times 0.05 is 0.1. Okay, so this would end up being point, if it asked us, this would be 0.45, 
This would be 0.45 and this is 0.1. So I think that's a fairly straightforward equilibrium problem. Uh, hopefully you will, if you don't feel that right now, I think you will by the end of this chapter. Okay. Now we have another one this time. We want to identify our substance. Substance is present. We again have a gas phase reaction. Uh, we do have a dilution this time because we had one volume and we transferred it to another volume. So we do have to include a dilution. So my volume one, voom voom, is what I do. It just makes a nice way of thinking about it. I know a lot of teachers do molarity one times volume one, but I like to do volume one molarity one because it gives me voom voom. And my new volume is 0 0.250, and I need my new molarity. And when I solve for that new molarity, molarity 2 is 0 0.01 molar. So that's my new molarity. Now when you do dilutions and stoichiometries, that information in your rice table um, is going to feed into your initial value here. So once you do those dilutions and stoichiometries, they're helping us get to our starting points. None of that, none of that. Minus 2x plus 2x plus x okay this time it is uh, we're given the equilibrium and I'm going to go ahead and fill out my whole table 2x and x and things decompose and I have to find the equilibrium concentrations of each species well k is equal to SO2 squared times O2 products over reactants. We only include gases and aqueous. And we're given K. So I have 1.6 times 10 to the minus 10th is 2x squared. The most common thing you're going to forget to do is you're going to forget to square that too. So be really careful. Times x over 0.01 minus 2x squared. Now, right now this looks like horrendous algebra again. Now, if you are in college, your professor may make you deal with that horrendous algebra. But at the AP and IB level, we're going to neglect that 2x. Because k is so small, it means we've got such a reactant favored reaction that the 2x is going to be very small compared to 0.01. So, um, We'll see at the end how small it is and that it rounds, um, but it's it would be like saying, okay, I'm going to take 0.01, I'm making up numbers here, minus 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, which rounded to sig figs is still 0.01. So that's what we're saying is, is that the addition and subtraction is so small, we're, we're going to get to ignore it. All right, so um, let's take a look then and finish our math. So once you do that algebra, you would find that x is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus fifth. And it says calculate all equilibrium concentrations. So that's my concentration of O2. My concentration of SO2 is equal to 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus fifth. And so that's um, 3.2 times 10 to the minus fifth. And my concentration, I'm going to show this in a little bit more detail, SO3 is equal to 0 0.01 minus 2x, which we've determined is 3.2 times 10 to the minus fifth. And 
that's equal to 0 0.009968, which two, the two or three sig figs we have to have is 0 0.010. We probably, I personally would accept either two sig figs or three sig figs on this one. I, I usually go from my values that are given, not my constants, and that one has two sig figs, so our final answers would be two sig figs. So thank you so much for joining me in this video. I really appreciate your time and hope I'm able to help you in chemistry.